Henry and Chris could I ask you to come to the stage if you would do uh, 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 Henry and Chris uh, their own company is Creative 3 Media and they're going to talk about get your brand seen heard and noticed so uh, they're obviously used to working as a double as a team <laughs> and uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen I'll give you a uh, Creative 3 Media thank you very much Chris. I'm Henry. And we are Creative 3 Media. So we have been working together for uh, <laughs> and we've been working together for the last twenty seven years and it's twenty seven in in the end of the month. Yeah. And whenever I thought about it, just last night whenever, before we got up here, I was thinking, wow, twenty seven years this is zoomed by so quick. So we want to kinda of like go through some of the things that we have noticed. Over the so what we want to do is we want to cover some of the things that we have learned over the last 27 years in business, some of the things that we hope that will give you some tips that you can walk away with today and you can apply from today into your business. So we've, we've spent a lot of money for, on, on behalf of a lot of clients over the years, um, some huge big campaigns, some really small campaigns from huge public bodies right down to small companies uh, like hairdressers and butcher shops and things like that. And over that time, we have seen what has worked and what has not worked, and hopefully that's what we're going to kind of share with you and give us a bit of a, a clue in on some places that you can spend money, some places you can get away for free, and some things you can apply to your business from today. So, one of our big things that we like to say is that we like to get people seen, we like to get them heard, and we like to get them noticed. And the, the biggest way to do that is to be consistent and I think as marketers we kind of make things seem really complicated whenever it comes to market we'll talk about tracking pixels retargeting sequences we'll talk about like analytics and and watching everything that's happening and it gets really really granular but what we want to give you is being consistent with your message and it's, it's probably one of the big things that we come away with <laughs> when do we wrong again okay so these are some of the things we create so we, we create marketing strategy Video production, all the kind of stuff that you'll see other agencies make. So we, we can't do the same thing. So we do. But the one thing that we want to kind of hit home is on brand. So I'm going to hand you the mic. Guys, uh, Emma, well done. Fantastic. That was a fantastic session. You know, as Chris says, uh, seen, heard, noticed. We want to make Northern Ireland and Ireland film stars on, on the business front. And we do that from a range of talents. You see this guy running around here, Klaus. Just off the bat, our stall is next door. It's the one with five small television, as you can see through here. Sorry, it's a 70 inch television. We've brought the team down. We want you guys to milk us. There's web guys here, 10 years experience, brand guys, 25 years. Christopher and I have been in business 27 years. And Klaus here, and uh, I think Ben's here as well. Years and years and years of experience. We want you to milk us for information. And we have resources on our site, how to build your LinkedIn brand. We have strategies. We we'll want to give those things away free. But, so we want just to milk, you, uh, to milk us today. Brand, without a, a good brand identity, we'll never be recognized. You know, we have worked on brand strategies for, for many, many years. And we want to get you recognized. We want to, you, we want to feel your tone, your message, your culture, and we want to put that out in front of the right demographic, the people you want to uh, do, do business with. Brand identity builds loyalty and trust. People buy people. We, we all heard we all heard that for many, many years. And we take your tone and your personality and your, your charisma, and we put that maybe into video form, we put it into design, we put it into paid ads, and we bring your tone and your culture out. So it builds uh, the right uh, uh, trust in front of the right eyes. A good brand identify and attracts the right talent. We are doing more video content now. You know, we've heard it all over Northern Ireland is that people are struggling to get talent, they're struggling to get staff. We're actually shooting video content about uh, culture about tone to actually attract the right talent and just being uh, just when i say the right talent we rates increase revenue let's face it we've all kissed a few frogs really years, we? that client that you're actually thinking about now you'd love to get rid of we actually have we, we actually sit down and strategize who do you want to deal with 
Where do you want to be in six months? Where do you want to be in a year? Where do you want to be in three years? Who is that client you want to be dealing with? And we start to create that narrative, that story around your business and we, are, we start to put you in front of those right eyes. And part of our strategy is, whether it's in hospitality, engineering or whatever, we go to work straight off the bat. We do a lot of work before we actually design anything or shoot anything. Purely because we, we want to take you where you want to be. We want to bring you to Mr. Hanson or Miss, Mrs. Beautiful. We want to put you uh, in the right demographic so it increases revenue. But as Christopher says, one of the, the big things for us is consistency. Mm. That uh, which is birthed out of enthusiasm usually dies for the lack of it. And I, I see it with, with clients who we obviously have retainer clients who we represent month in and month out. And we said, look, you still post and they start off with enthusiasm and then they fall off and then they get a phone call from me going, where are you? Where are you? Keep, keep developing that muscle. Constant voice will bring constant content. And when you're putting that constant content, that broad message in out, you will be noticed. Constant posting. We would always uh, post at the same time, obviously with the demographic involved where we want to put in front of the right eyes. We post at the same time every single week. We beat the life out of potential markets by high-end content. Develop the habit of creating content. And, and I know it's hard, and you don't have the time for it. No, you do have the time. Stop lying to yourself. Take, we have a document which is called the LinkedIn uh, Build Booster. And it gives you a clear strategy, and it's free. But you have to make the time, because consistency will get you to the place where you're going. So build consistency. Chris. <laughs> okay. Apologies, I got excited. There. You did get excited. <laughs> okay, so what we want to do is, as, as I said, we've, we've been in marketing for a long time, and we want to look at the two aspects. So like, everybody probably in this room has a social media account. They're all actively using maybe paid ads, you've got a website, you've got things already running. There's also a lot that you can do offline. Over the years, we've run billboard campaigns, we've done cinema ads, radio ads, uh, pretty much everything that you can try, we've tried it. And the thing that I absolutely love and adore is social media. So social media in the last 15 years for us has been an absolute game changer. It's been able to give us a lot more metrics, put the right content in front of the right people. So for me, if, if I was to start a, a business from today, first thing I would do is, is make sure that all my socials are all up and running. And then from making the good content that's on social media, and Emma touched on this earlier, is putting an actual budget to it and making sure that people can see it. So there's no point putting out really cool looking content and no one actually seeing it. So you have to put the actual the money in behind it. If we go back years ago, whenever we used to do print and production, a lot of companies would have spent thousands with us on brochures and things like that they would have put out. But nowadays, so many people think, well, social media is free. I can just put things up and onto it. But the, the reality is you still have to spend that budget that was allocated to your business and, and spend that in, in paid search and paid ads and things like that. So for us, there's loads of different ways you can target people when it comes to social media. So if you're actively right now publishing stuff on a daily basis or on a bi-daily bi basis, there's, there's things that you can do with paid search. In this case here, we, we use Sky TV and Smart. And we would target people using more touch points than what you would get with like, the likes of Facebook. So Facebook won't be able to tell you how much each of you earn in the room at the minute. Whereas with Sky TV, we can see with Experian data how much money you, you turn over every every year. It's really invasive, actually, it's horrible. But pretty much what they're able to do is, is even look at the stuff that you buy in Tesco. So if you're buying like a certain whiskey, we can then retarget you based on that whiskey, your postcode, how many kids you have, how much money you earn, what type of car you drive, whether you're moving home. So you can do a lot more kind of smart targeting. For me, it's super invasive, but it really works. And Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, they all have all their own various touch points that really, really work. So using smart targeting with the stuff that you're doing. So think about who you're trying to reach and the touch points that are going to help you reach those people. Um, uh, and then whenever it comes to reaching people online, one of our kind of like specialist areas, and the thing that I absolutely love, so if you're in the B2B, um, that's probably our favorite area to, to market in because LinkedIn is a fantastic tool. When it comes to LinkedIn, you can reach people who are already thinking about marketing, they're already thinking about growing their business, and their mindset is switched on. So the likes of TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, 
their platforms that people are there to be entertained primarily. So whenever I go onto any of those platforms, I'm killing time and I want to be entertained. I don't really want to be sold products to, but I'll end up buying products because I'm getting pushed stuff that's relevant to me. So for me, whenever it comes to LinkedIn, that's where you're going to engage with people that actually genuinely want to grow their business and want to work with you. So putting content out on LinkedIn, you'll probably see that that's probably where, as a business, we put the most content out onto. And we'll make sure that we do one every single day that we'll post on behalf of each other and we'll post podcasts, content, and we'll go through some types of content that you can share in a, in a bit here. But for me, um, different platforms and think about what platform matters to you, where your, your audience are, where your customers are. So some of you guys may have huge CRMs with loads of data in it and think about maybe what type of content you're putting out to those thick segmented lists inside your, your email marketing. Um, for me, tracking what you do is really important. Emma touched on this as well, and tracking where you're spending your money. So as, as business owners, whenever we meet other business owners, they don't really care about what you're going to actually be producing, how well it looks. They only actually care about what's it giving them as a return, how much sales, how much traffic they're getting. And having this is the key to doing everything. So if you're spending any sort of money online, spend it with your actual uh, metrics in, in the background of it. So this is one of the last things, and it's probably the, the biggest thing that matters to us is video production. So this is the one thing that I'm hoping it's going to give you guys a bit of focus for the leaving here in the conference, is that whenever you're doing video production, it's three times the engagement of any other type of, of medium that you can do. So if you were to use a static post, it'll hold people for a split second whenever they scroll by your ad. If you're using the carousel, it'll hold them for slightly longer because they're having to swipe through all the content which I, I really like carousels as well. But when it comes to video, video is the absolute king. And we have been using video for the last maybe 25 years. When we first started out, we were doing the video VHS cassettes. I don't know how many people in here will remember VHS cassettes. You know what it is? <laughs> but we used to hand them out in the post them and post them out to clients so on behalf of our clients. And uh, then we moved to DVD, thinking we're really technical. And then after that, we went into online. So online video production has went from maybe like three, four minute uh, videos right down into about 45 seconds would be the sweet spot for us. And then with a, a look for like maybe 30 seconds, a little small snippets. So whenever we go out on a production, the first thing I would, I would be sending any of our team is make the videos really small, bite-sized, manageable chunks. And then if it's going to be a long form, stick it onto your website because that, that that way the person's actually engaged and wanting to, to find out more of your product or on your squeeze page or your funnel. So for me, we've put up this list of things that we find that really, really work. So whenever people come to us and say, we want to produce some video content and they've zero idea of what they want to do, we have a ton of different types of videos and these are actually just a, a couple of them. There's so many videos that you can make for your business and so many different ideas that you can do that will entertain primarily if you're using LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. TikTok's fantastic. It's free traffic at the moment, so it is, but it's going to change. Um, for me, whenever you're making content, if you, if you get a, a chance to even snap these and, and take them down, this is some of the stuff that will actually genuinely entertain people and keep them wanting to uh, go through the rest of your content. So for us, a lot of this can be done for free, but as Emma said earlier, is that you have to spend a bit of money. So if you make some of this content and you're really proud of it and you're happy with it, start putting it out there and start sharing it and target the right demographic with it as well. So put, you can spend as little as five pound a week on it and then you can you can bump that right up. So the thing for us is that learn what's working, learn what's resonating with your, your demographic and once you have that, then start putting physical cash to it so that if you start getting a couple more sales, start pushing some of the, the profits of that sale back into your, your ad spends and you'll, you'll start to see your, your business grow. So, I'll, I'll turn it over to Harry because I'm, I'm realizing I'm off for a lot. No, I did. All good stuff. Um, for me, I, I want to get a, a few uh, things that we've actually developed, and not only with ourselves, but also with other other uh, people. You may be a, a self employed individual, or you may have a, a larger business, but it all works. Start either attending marketing events or create your own. I don't know what space you are in, and don't think, oh, well, who wants to come and listen to me? Start to collaborate with different different people. Start to collaborate with different and start to, whether it's a small town or a city or whatever, but start to create marketing events around you. Create a podcast. You say, well, who's going to listen to me? Who cares? Start 
And if you need help with setting up a podcast, the guys are more than happy because we'd, we'd, we'd do that. Because why do, why do I say that? We want you to become an authority and a voice and a brand uh, ambassador for your space. So don't, don't, you know, we in Northern Ireland, I think are very, very hard on ourselves. We go, you know, you give somebody a compliment about their coat, they go, oh, I got it in the sale. Why do we do that here? We, we, we seem to put everything down. We have a, a number of magnificent businesses in Northern Ireland. We want to shout loud and proud. So we start to get proud about who you are and start to network with people. But look at, at the idea of starting a podcast and become that authority, that voice, and create and build your own audience. Position your brand, position your brand, position it relationally, position yourself financially. Why? Because see, when you position yourself relationally financially, opportunity, 30 seconds just heard, Opportunity will come. We have just purchased a 4,000 square foot building where we're going to run live stream events, podcasts. You, you, it's, it's down in Whitehead. And we want to build people up. We are givers at heart. And we want to build Northern Ireland's brands. And, a, and we want to give you a platform and a voice in whatever capacity or whatever field that you are. 30 seconds. 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay? Three, you will come back. I'll take my, oh, can I, can I shout out about this? Yes, sure, sure. Two fantastic books surrounded by idiots. I, I think one of the things that we don't understand, especially in marketing, is, and by the way, it's, it's about behavior. He and left it on my desk, actually, just to wind me up. It's actually about behaviors and stuff like that. So we were, I actually threw it down to wind the guys up and things surrounded by idiots, but it's about all the different... Sometimes you put square people in round holes. A, a book like that is absolutely fantastic for you to learn that he's not as psychotic as he's called. Just call it the book. Surrounded by Idiots by Thomas Erickson. And it's about behavior. And I think a lot of things that we miss at times is the demographic we're trying. We need to learn their behavior mm. as well and start putting that message towards their behavior. Apologies for the No, no bother. Great. Thanks okay. very much. Thank you. <laughs> So, Chris and Henry, uh, thanks a million again. Um, lots of practical, lots and lots of practical tips there. Um, brand is king. Uh, brand identity builds loyalty and trust. Seen, heard, noticed. Um, and then when you talked about the Sky TV, I was kind of spooked about it, but the introduction to smart targeting, really, really important to consider. And of course, you know, we keep being told about the importance of video content. But what hit home to me, uh, Chris, when you said video, about three times the engagement, and that's something that we've got to be, be thinking about. Um, and I know in the questions and answers we're coming up, I'll have a few questions, and certainly we don't do enough of that, Henry, about being shouting loud and proud. And uh, I loved the way you were talking about starting a podcast, and anyone that knows me will know that that's close to my own heart, and there's been a real growth in that, and there's room for that. And uh, personally, I think that's great. We all should be using that medium and many others to develop our own personality. Um, I'd love to see the new studio in Whitehead. It sounded fantastic. Maybe, maybe we could get a virtual tour of it as well. So thanks. Lots of practical tips again. And uh, the guys will be coming uh, up for some questions and answers.